I'm Jim Cassio. How you doing? I'm Frank Henderson. And I'm Bill Monaco. We are 86 This Podcast. On location today. some fun let's go stay tuned see us again we will be on location every weekend Just landed at Ocean Beach. Gavin, the dock master extraordinaire for houses, which is right behind us and, also. And, mermaid. and Island Mermaid right here. Uh, I don't know if you saw him, he's a, like a water cowboy. Gavin, how long have you been doing this? 15 years at Ocean uh, Beach. Wow, holy natural. So you were like this big? Yeah, 21. <laughs> so I'm nice. still holding on to the dream as long now, as possible. Well. Now, are you still like, is this a full time gift? No, or? I'm just Saturdays and Sundays as of right now. That's awesome, that's awesome. So come check out Gavin over at Ocean Beach, and we're out. people get off that ferry on a daily basis here in the height of the season it's a wonderful place to be it's 86 this podcast everybody thanks all right we're here with alex madsen alex tell us a little bit about what you do here at mcguire's here at McGuire's. Can you do the whole welcome to the best place on Ocean Beach? Well, you kind of have to come here to actually see it. But when you come in, we she, open you with she open it arms. She greeted welcome us with one of the, to the best nicest place welcomes that anyone in the hospitality has ever welcomed me. <laughs> possibly, maybe I'm not so welcome to most of them. You know I, what? I certainly have never welcomed you like that. But <laughs> I, I haven't either, so. Yeah, well, shame on you guys. I shame on you guys. I, See, I didn't you even think about that. the welcome like that, okay? That was pretty incredible. Hey, we weren't the only ones at the front door. We're, we're here at McGuire's. They let us come in here and confiscate Alex for a few moments on their busy Sunday before the holiday weekend. Are you guys all like ready to go, all revved up? I'd say we're getting there. Uh, we did just open on April 30th, so we've been working towards, you know, getting ready for the big season. Now, did you expect this to be, today well to be as busy as it is no that's, we did not and and we are very grateful and we are hopefully providing the atmosphere and environment that the people are enjoying and we hope to see well, more people come down and you can't beat this so i don't know why if you can you just scan around really quick and you can see the whole crowd here and then how everyone's enjoying themselves and we're right on the, it's Maguire's Bayfront Restaurant also, so we're actually on the bay here, which is uh, pretty spectacular views. Alex lives here during the season. I do. I live here from April to October. Yeah, do they give you good like living arrangements here? And you can be honest. Well, I actually um, was in charge of getting my own living arrangements. We do have a house that the staff lives in, and most of the people I live with in my house is Maguire's staff. Now, how many, how many usually room with each other? 
So in my house, there's seven of us. Okay. In the other McGuire staff house, um, I think there's about Is it here seven. on Ocean Beach? <clears throat> yeah, so the other McGuire staff house is right over here on Denhoff, and then we are over on the Seaview Ocean Bay Park line on nice. Superior. Very yeah. Nice. Sounds like a party. It's yes. always it's a good time. It's a good time. And okay. so where do you where do you reside normally? I live in West Babylon. And, and your your real job, as they call it, although this is a pretty cool job. <laughs> I'm uh, an educator. I would of the love youth. this job. I teach the youth. Can you guess In what fact, subject I, I teach? I love this podcast. This is kind of cool, right? This, this is, is this, this is a great stuff. day. We're having right? a great day. On, Absolutely. Cheers, Cheers. Guys. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to Cheers. that. Cheers. There we go. <laughs> so, um, how long have you been here? This is my third year working at McGuire's Bayfront Restaurant. Um, second year as it well I should say year and a half as being the manager um, I do also work as a server but as a manager I'm in charge of all things McGuire's so social media Facebook Instagram um, where I'm also in charge of the website I do all of the wow. menus um, now do you have a background in that or you kind of learn from the school of hard times basically trial and error so I actually have my doctorate in educational leadership and management. So a lot of like Very what cool. I learned through that, I kind of apply here. And then just being really tech savvy, I have a tech certificate from Sacred Heart University. There you uh, go. That's what go. I was so, trying to get out of you. So, uh, you know. Well, so they're lucky to have you. I mean, you know. <laughs> if I may be so humble. I say, when they count their blessings, they count me three times. <laughs> nice. Very nice. So, so you can count blessings three times? I'm yeah, of saying. course, because it's uh, me. You know? I might have to do that on our way home. But, so Definitely. now, have you found, now after the nonsense of the pandemic, I don't even want to get into it because it's so deep to death. Uh, you find it hard to get employees here this season? It has been extremely difficult to find employment this season. Um, it's so currently something that so we have actually, we have a very veteran staff, which super grateful for every single one of them. Well, that's great. Jim Bubba? Yeah. No, he's not, unfortunately, uh, but his nephew Tommy is. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I nice. you go. And uh, Tommy, all of our bartenders have been here for quite some time. We have a very amazing, loyal veteran staff. Kudos to them. If you guys come down and visit them, you'll know exactly who they are because they just run this place like it's so, second nature. So what can we look forward to at McGuire's Safeway Restaurant coming into this season? Anything new, anything exciting happen? I mean, like there's been so many changes in our industry uh, because of, you know, the obvious. Uh, anything we can look forward to? Anything you have, have been working on? Well, with the changing guidelines. I'm going to have a sip of my beer. I think you absolutely should Thank enjoy you. your beer. If you need another one, let me know. My veteran staff over here will get you another one. You guys um, are extremely accommodating. Yeah. You're awesome. We love having you here. But um, with the changing guidelines from the CDC, we were able to open our deck back up. Uh, our staff is pretty much all vaccinated with you know the exception of one or two okay. so it's been good. it's been extremely percentage. right yeah it, it's it's great um so with that said we are kind of going back to the old ways which doesn't sound like a lot but in the big scheme of things it's huge it's huge it, it, it's it's a sense of normalcy it's a sense of being able to just take a deep breath of fresh air no and masks no masks look man. it up I, hey. no masks yeah. Find Pretty any cool. Problems with masks with, with customers and staff. Like. So our staff is going to remain masked for some time. We're going to wait a couple of weeks just to kind of see and, how. And you're doing feels. that because you think it, the customers feel more comfortable with it, or because you feel it's like a, you have to? It's a healthy mix of both. So um, we're doing it for our patrons, obviously, and also for our staff, so that everyone feels comfortable. And we had a big meeting this morning, and Jim, our owner, expressed to the staff that you know, it, once we do lift the mask mandate for the staff um if you're not feeling comfortable you can stay masked and that's sure. absolutely fine um so we'll see it's, it's honestly it's all a working game here but like you could just every feel day, the, is the ever changing it yeah is, well, it, for sure but yeah. you can feel the energy on the island absolutely this place is going to be off the hook and we're this season. Ready You're gonna have one of the greatest excited. seasons you ever had, for sure. I, just, uh, I think every bar, restaurant on this yeah. side of town will do better than they, they did yeah. before the pandemic. 
because uh, people are locked up for so long. Yeah. Now they just want to go out and party. Yeah. And you have a very nice little spot. Well, I was just about to say, have you guys ever been here around 6.30 to about 8.30 at night? Uh, no, I've never been on Fire oh, Island. I don't know what God. you're talking about. So I've never well, been no, here. I, I don't mean yeah. on Fire Island. I mean at the uh, water. Of course, yeah. Have you been here? You need to visit our Instagram page. I was here last night, actually. I was here last night. Oh, my God. Who was your server? Was it me? No, it was not you. But a gentleman served us over there. Well, we had some kids at the playground. I love that. Cocktails was great. Yes, that's also a huge benefit. We have the playground right here. So um, the garden tables fill up because everyone wants to be able to just be like, okay, my kid's good. I'm going to have a cocktail. Is that admitting to bad parenting? No. Sitting here having cocktails with the kids on the playground? I think it's... How you Smart stay sane. Parenting. But um, what I was going to say, I lost my train well, of thought. So we see, obviously, dinner is, is doing very well. Anything we can look at as far as look forward to nightlife one? We Fair will be having. Um, we we are revisiting because with the COVID guidelines, we couldn't have last night. Sure. So that is on our agenda. We, we, we have a few bands lined up. To, we'll be calling them. Um, we'll definitely have some live music in here this summer. Also, uh, we have our big 4th of July celebration. We'll be opening up our late night. Cool. So hopefully this deck will be packed. We'll have the inside packed with some late night situations, you know, given the guidelines and what we can and cannot do. But uh, that's also very exciting, being able to bring that back. Because that was something... I think that last year our owners, our, the owners here, did a phenomenal job of navigating the pandemic. They kept everyone safe. Yep. And it wasn't easy. It wasn't and, easy. It and was, and it was a meeting every day. It was revisiting the guidelines every day. It was sure. a lot of research. It was it was some hard work, but they did a phenomenal job. And in a historically um, restrictive community in general, the local government worked with you all as well to give yes. you some extra seating and things, yes. so whatever they could do to help you know help you get yes. through it. I was I was impressed because uh, you know it, sometimes the folks you know the local government gets a little bit of a knock for being a little bit restrictive. Absolutely, the uh, land of no, but we know. exactly the land of no. You said but, it, not but, me. It's okay. But 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 it's they were. I I I. Well, they, you know, right. without getting into the, the debate over whether or not that's all necessary, right. because it could get, you know, yeah, get yeah. out of control. <laughs> yeah. But um, aside from that, they they left their normal restrictive tendencies and gave local establishments a little bit more, you know, freedom where to try and stay sitting? afloat. Yeah, where we are sitting right now, two years, actually, even a year Wasn't allowed, right? right? Wasn't allowed. Wasn't allowed. This this was Bush. It was Yeah, Biden. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. No, so I want to give credit where credit is due. Yeah, and, like you know, said, remember I said yeah. in episode, like, I think three, yeah. where when people complained about the uh, COVID, I kept saying, yeah, but again, they'll let you do things that you're yeah. not allowed to do. And it helps the business. Like, this was all Bush, like you said. It, it, right. it would, it would, it would. Out extra tables. Right. All right. And which is pretty much going to go yeah. to, your, to your revenue. So it kind of yeah. Ho- ho- hopefully, right. as long as it continues, right. it continues that but but way. but if they didn't work with you, it would have been untenable. Yeah, right. Because you would have been like out of you know, you would make it a difficult situation, right. impossible. Right. And, and the plus is it's here. It's still it's here. here. And it's, yeah. it's and, and I'm believing you guys will probably keep it. Right? No, it's great. And there's no reason why we you have should. Very big plans for this area. Ah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. I hope that you guys oh, revisit yeah, this we time will. Will. next year. That's coming directly from Alex Matson oh, from McCoy's Bayfront Restaurant. Big things coming here. Thank you so much for giving us like a little real moment of your time on a busy day. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure meeting you. Super grateful. And for guys, you guys pleasure. Guys, we're gonna, we're gonna to, come back uh, and bug you. Absolutely. I hope yes. you do. It might be later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. It's time to uh, 86 this. Thanks. So much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we're here with Sienna on Ocean Beach and her large group of friends. Everybody say. Woo! We're, st- we're staying here overnight. Nice. Where are you staying? Anywhere? Uh, in Ocean Beach, somewhere. I don't know where. In a house. Yeah, no, let's go. What's the purpose for you being here? Because you know what? We're going to be spread on Ocean Beach. So, it's going to be all over YouTube. It's going to be on the internet. All well, let's stuff. Say, so, now, what brings you to Ocean Beach? We just graduated physical therapy school. Nice. And we want to celebrate. We're all done. We all know each other through that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, now, what brings you to Ocean Beach? Yeah. 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 Now, what brings you to Ocean Beach, though? Why Ocean Beach? I always went with the kids. Because of the rocket fuel. Congratulations. 
Operator of Island Mermaid here on Ocean Beach. Scott has withstood the test of time here, and it's uh, we want to we want to know your, your what your thoughts are and what your secret is to being here. For now, you know what? Let's do something a little different. Let's take it back. How did you find yourself here on Fire Island? Uh, I came over uh, as a 16, 17 year old kid from East Iceland. I had just moved there with uh, uh, my family. Where'd your family originally? Well, we came from Jamaica, Queens, and, uh, but I grew up in Hicksville, Long Island. Okay. So that 25 miles was a big deal to me <laughs> in 10th grade, man. I had to leave all my friends behind and start over. But uh, yeah, one night the guy said to me, uh, we're going to go over to this place called Fire Island. We want you to come. I said, what the F is Fire Island? <laughs> they said, well, you're already asking too many questions. <laughs> yeah, wow. Fire Island is where we go, we hang out. Kind of like all conversation yeah. about Fire Island. Right. And then I asked one more question. I said, they said, they said, tell your parents you're sleeping at Phil's house. We're going to fire. So I said, where are we going to sleep? Like, too many questions. We're going to sleep under a guy's house. I no, said, get that. I have a lot of questions. All right. <laughs> so, all right. so 15 of us came over. 15 guys, one girl. And uh, it was pouring rain. We piled under a house in Atlantique. And the rain stopped. We all came out from under the house and wandered into Ocean Beach. We split up in groups of three Under a house? Four. Yeah. Split up into groups of three or four, and I wandered into Tao Pizza. Talked my way into a job. The guy said, he seemed like a nice kid. Call me in a week. I called him the next day. I think I was still on fire out when I called him. He said, I like your kid. You got moxie. You're, you're aggressive. I like you. Come on over. So, Town Pizza where it is yeah, yeah. now? Yeah. Oh. So Angelo, who owns it now yeah. from his father, he was my bunk mate when we were both 17. We lived in the back in bunk beds. Oh, oh and, wow. And so now you, you make the transition to yeah, the story. How, well, the story from there to here is really a beautiful story. It's got a, a few really cool twists and turns. I don't know how much you want to know, but I'm happy. I'm happy to tell you, but yeah. it was great. Well, let us know. Just, I'll try to give you the highlight. Well, it's very important because, it, I mean, you're a staple here on Ocean Beach. You're, more, I, I you're the more you're, highlight. Yeah, you're, you're the most popular. A, a, couple, a couple of highlights. Yeah. And, 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 and everything I'm about to tell you is true, okay. though you may not believe it. So, <laughs> so, so, so picture this. It's year one. It's 19. Let's see. I graduated in 77, so this would have been 76. Free love, Fire Island, free AIDS. It's just, you know, that peak of disco, John Travolta. So I'm working 17 hours, seven days a week in the pizza place. And finally I say, I'm gonna take a night off. And this one young lady had been coming in for pizza regularly. She caught my eye. Turned out she was a DJ at WLIR. So she was older than me. She's about 24, but I took a shot. And she said, yeah, I'll go out with you. So here I am, I'm gonna go on my big night out. Right, right, right. Take the night off, we go out, and of course, it was, you know, it, was, it wasn't that hard back then. It wasn't a slam dunk. But right, 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 okay. right, And the next morning, this is where it gets a little dicey for your readers, but the next, right. morning, the next morning, I'm like, I'm like, something's wrong. I can't figure out what it is, and I'm freaking out. I'm 17 years old, never lived on my own. So I said, I gotta find some older guy that might know what's going on with me, because I'm upset now. I'm like, and so I look outside, and on the bench outside is Frankie, fearless Frankie. Picture a cross between the Fonzie and John Travolta. Good-looking guy. <laughs> Girls lined up just to talk to him, just to be in his presence. But he had this crazy shtick. He could talk, but he wouldn't talk. So I go up to him and I go, oh, Frankie, I need some help. And he goes, helps me over to Bill Goodman's pharmacy. No words. He goes to Milk. Milk puts the bo box off the shelf. It was a box everybody used back then. I look at it. I go, oh. now I'm figuring out what my problem is. Take a shower. You do your thing. Problem solved. But I'm miserable. It's like <laughs> two days of misery. So I start telling all the guys I'm working with in Town Pizza, including the boss's son, I'm done. I'm one and done. I worked. All I did was work. I went out with this girl. It was good, but you know, I'm done. I'm miserable. So then, 
right before, this was in August, right before Labor Day weekend. Sorry. It's a bad fall. Well, you know what? Frank is known for disruption. He is the... Just when I'm getting to the good part of the yeah. story. I know! So this is the good part of the story. So, 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 I get my problem fixed and I start moaning about how, how disappointed I am. And one night the old man comes in, the, the Italian guy, and he goes, uh, I want to see you out in the alley. Now, I don't know what he knows. I don't know why he wants. I think he thinks I'm stealing. Right, right, right. right. So I'm ready to get whacked. The alley is dark. It's, and he goes, he takes me in the alley. where you, Right now, you can get a slice of pizza in the alley. Back then, it was dark. So he goes, I want to see you out in the alley. I'm like, oh, what did I do? I didn't steal. I swear, I'm thinking. He goes, so what's this I hear? You're not coming back. I go, I'm thinking to myself, do I tell him the story, the whole story, like, or just I'm miserable? Because right, I don't right. really want him to know what I caught. You know what right, I mean? Right, 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 right. Yeah. So, uh, he says, uh, I go out in the alley, he goes, uh, I go, well, I'm really not, he goes, put your hands out. And now I'm thinking, now I'm really, like, put your hands out, it's like, and he reaches in his back pocket and pulls out a stack of $100 bills, I swear to God. Also peels off $800 bills, stick your hands out, and he puts in my hand, he goes, you know that stereo you've been moaning about, you want to get like for college or whatever, I was crying about why I was there, right. he goes, I want you to buy the best stereo that you can get on one condition, he goes, I go, yeah, he goes, that you be back next year, you're the best fucking worker I've ever seen, <laughs> and I go like this, I go, I'll be back, <laughs> So I got bought in the side slice alley of town pizza for 800 bucks, otherwise I wouldn't be sitting here. Oh wow, that was a true story. story. Boy, that right. story started really disturbing. It is a true story. <laughs> okay, wow. True story. And you've been here ever since. Yeah. yeah. So now, wow. and then after that, it gets there's some. Uh, the no, couple, then it goes from there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll give you the fast forward version. Yeah, yeah. So, I stayed at Town Pizza the next year. Then Mike the Greek, who is a legend, where Rachel's is now. Right. Mike the Greek wanted to open a pizza place where the bakery is. Rachel's was on the ground. Right, 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 right. So Mike, Mike's the saying ground. pizza's happening. He grabs me and says, Scott, can you help me open a pizza place? So I did that. I bartended part-time at Fellas, which is which is um, uh, where the uh, cast, old castaway was. And uh, very soon I decided the bar business was for me. That was where the action was. I went for pizza, and now I'm getting a little taste of the bar business. So I made friends with a woman who's the, she's the grand dom of real estate and firearms. She's since passed, may she rest in peace. Her grandson works for me, um, Arlene Jack. So I, one day I said to her, while I was bartending at Fellas, I said, I said, Arlene, I, I see you around with the guys that own the apple orchard. Now the apple orchard was where the sandbar is. But oh, then, elegant, right. imagine, elegant, right. there was two epicenters on Fire Island of the disco era. One was the Ice Palace in the Grove, right. and the other was the Ice Palace. Right. And the Ice Palace, I mean the uh, cher uh, uh, Apple Orchard, we were getting 10 bucks and either a Quaalude or a joint at the door. <laughs> well, we had a choice, it was 10 and wow. something. So I became like the young door guy, worked my way up to bartender. I started at bar back. You still have that same same uh, philosophy here now. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's 50 bucks. <laughs> so, so I started working in the hottest club at the hottest moment in Fire Island wow. and met a lot of people. But the twins who owned it were, you know, everybody knew they were selling it. I didn't want to work for the next people, so I said to the same lady, Arlene, I need another favor. She's like, sure, Scott, what do you need? She always took care of her. She said, I said, you know that place Leo's down the street? That's where I really want to be. That's this place. Oh, okay. This is the best part of the whole story. So she said, sure, I know. I said, I see you. I know, I know Leo. I'll get you. Uh, I'll, 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 you know. Now, Leo, you have to think. Foul mouth Jewish Danny DeVito. <laughs> this thing, literally this thing, famous jingle writer. He wrote, Let Your Fingers Do the Walk. No, no way. Way. Oh, oh, wow. Madison Avenue. Wow. He owned this place. Wow, oh, okay. So I get a call from his assistant saying, Mr. Schumer would like to see you in his New York City apartment for an interview. This is great. Get the address. I'm looking at the address. I had barely been to Manhattan at that point. Right, right, right. right. So, I put on my best young young man seersucker suit and tie, and I'm heading in on the Long Island Railroad for what is going to be, but I don't know, 
the fastest 30 second interview ever. 30 seconds, but I don't know it yet. So I'm on the train, I'm thinking, I know all about this guy, he's a rascal, he's, he loves like sarcastic shit, he's a, drops F-bombs left and right. I'm thinking, what is this guy gonna ask me? And then one question dawned on me, I put it in my back pocket. I had a snarky answer ready. <laughs> put it in my back pocket, I get in, I take uh, whatever over there, and it's 1095 Fifth Avenue which I don't know if you know it is like the Jackie Onassis yeah, building. Right. It's like literally Central Park, Fifth Avenue. Mm -hmm. I walk in, I'm like, wow, this is unbelievable. The butler takes me upstairs, blah, blah, blah. Mr. Schumer, we'll see you. Please sit over at the piano. Now I hear the piano, but you can't see him. He's so small. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Central Park's in the background. I'm here. Wow. All of a sudden, he's, and he, I hear him go, sit down, kid. Sit down, kid. I sit down, I don't, still don't see him, I'm like nervous as shit. And he goes like this, he goes, my friend Arlene says you're a great worker, why the fuck should I hire you? And I go like this, this is the snarky answer I had ready. I say, because Mr. Schumer, someday I'm going to own that place and I got to know what to do. <laughs> not ever thinking that I would actually, yeah, right, 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 right. it was like a wise ass, because I knew he was a wise ass. Everybody knew that. Right, right, right. The guy would come in with two women to, the back, you know, like just a, like a rock on tour character. So he goes to me, he goes, "You're hired, kid. Now get the fuck out of here." <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. And that was like, that's how I started working. Here. Oh wow. Then he passed. Unfortunately, he passed. He had quadruple bypass surgery. He passed the next year, and his manager Wally took over, and I worked for him for eight years. And then it turned into Wally. And yeah. Then, and then I was the first one who had the idea to take out all the tables that we had a jukebox. I was like, this jukebox ain't cutting. We had a kill switch. You put on a bad song, I would kill it. Uh, it would be like, fuck it, I paid a quarter for that. That stuff sucks. That's what I said to Wally. So I said to Wally, I said, here's what we're gonna do. We'll take out all the tables and chairs after dinner, and we're gonna have dancing. I used to get on a water taxi, go to the pine, and back then it was reel to reel. They said, yes. one condition, you gotta buy a reel to reel. They, the DJs down there would make reel to reels, four hour reels, wow. and I'd pay them like 45 bucks plus the water taxi, come back with the reel to reel. Damn music, damn music, music here. here. That's older than you. Ah, uh, no, well, well, older than me now. No. No. He's yeah. older than me, this guy. This guy. We would pack this deck to the point wow. where the deck was fight like bouncing. Oh, oh wow. That's awesome. And that's how that started. And then after, while I was working for him, the building became for sale, but he had a, a lease. His lease was ending. And he didn't want to buy it because he was renting the whole place for $36,000 a year. I'd make more on the boat slips than his rental. <laughs> but I knew that, he didn't do that. Right, 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 right. So I went to him one day, I said, I'm going to buy this place. Like I was 29 years old, and he's like, no way it's going to happen. It's a million bucks. Right, right. One million bucks. So I go down to the owner, the George Stretch, who owned all this property, down down the street. I knock on his door. Mr. Stretch opens the door. Who are you? I go, you don't know me. I work at Wally's, and I want to buy your building. <laughs> he goes, come on in. I sit down with him. I go, I understand you're asking a million dollars for your building. I said, I don't have a million dollars. I'll tell you what I got. I got 50,000 bucks. That's because I had just settled my first case as a young lawyer, a right. single car rollover accident, and I take my fee, my right. little commission, and right. I'm gonna let it ride. Because <laughs> I got nothing to lose. Right, I right. wanted this place, I knew it could be something. So he, he's like, 50,000? I said, no, no, here's the deal. I'm gonna borrow 350 and I'm gonna put it into your building because your building's a shithole. He was like, nobody told me my building. I said, your building's a shithole, but I'm gonna make it nice. And your worst case scenario is, you're gonna take it back from me, and it's gonna be a nice building. If I don't make it, you're gonna know in the first year. Right. So you got my 50 and 350 I'm gonna put into the building. Right. And he's like, okay, on one condition. I'm gonna hold the paper at 15 percent. Uh, <laughs> Ooh! Yeah, wasn't that 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 What's with that? I go, I'm not paying a million <laughs> <laughs> I'm saving five grand. He said, we shook hands, we did the deal, 
and uh, the first five years, I didn't sleep all winter. I threw up every now, what, now, what year was it? Uh, 1990. Nine. Winter of 90. So what happened was, at the end of the year, because the debt service was so high, no matter what I was doing to change, elevate the game, right. it takes time. Right. So what I would do is I'd call all my vendors at the end of the year, and I'd say, I'm calling you, you don't have to chase me, but I owe you money. I owe you 12 grand, I owe you 18, and you're not getting 12. I got three for you, you're gonna carry the rest for next year, you charge me a little interest, but I called you. And they were like, nobody calls us. I go, I need you to work with me. I'm gonna make it through this. And all my vendors, who I still use now, that I've been loyal to, I've had the same vendors, a lot of them, for 30 years. Yeah, see, that, that, that's My that's fish guy, my clip. So, and I said to them, I said, so for four winters in a row, I, I was puking in the toilet bowl. <laughs> I took notes out. I think one year I took 15 grand just to get my bills paid. Because I was still a lawyer, so right, I was right. a few dollars. And, uh, and it was just horrible until I could refinance. In the fifth year, I had enough of a track record where I could go to a bank and get this fucking guy. So I think my next rate was like 9%. And, and it was uh, only five years. That's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Five years. Yeah. 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 I, I think I might have been coming here years after that, I might have started. Yeah, I do remember, when I used to come here, it was we had the big mermaid. This was the mermaid, right? Yeah. And the, the big statue in Light Above the Bar. Yeah. That's the one that's in Light Above the Bar. Oh, okay. That, was, that statue that's was, it's another great, I know I have a lot of stories, but. <laughs> no, it's funny. Uh, yeah, I, swear, that's, that's it. I remember that. So, so, I had, growing up here, I had made friends with one of the most famous sand sculptors on the planet. This guy named Jerry Lyman. You could Google him, he's written books. Whenever you go to a beach somewhere, you see like a three-story monster, crazy dragon, or you go to Central Park and there's a giant 20-foot ice sculpture, that's him. Travels all over the world. So I said, Jerry, I called him up one day, I said, Jerry, I'm opening a place in Fire Island, it's gonna be called Island Mermaid. I, I need a favor, I need you to make me something special. I wanna put it right over the bar. He loved the idea, he's a documentary filmmaker. He lives on, way up in like, uh, I guess, I don't know if it's called Spanish Harlem, but way up on the upper west side of Manhattan. And so he says, great. So I had my first wife model for it. She said, Susan's got to come and model for it. No, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 I can tell you about it. Somebody actually modeled? I got it first wife. Wow. So he made it. Yeah, that has some breasts on it. So the funny part of the story, the cute part of the story is, it's done, it's finished now. Now he's not charging me anything because I couldn't afford it, he could have charged me. It's 600 pounds, it's... So he says, I'll make it for you on one condition. He said, um, you gotta let me finish it on site with Fire Island Sand, real artist. Jerry, no problem, we'll take you out there. So we get up on scaffolds and the JMO help us, six guys, we drive into Manhattan, two trucks, we secure in the thing in the back of a truck, it's 600 pounds, we're gonna be going on the beach. And, and all these little kids, the girls, are coming out of this building, the little Spanish girls, and they're crying. I'm like, Jerry, what's up with, and he's filming it because he's a documentary filmmaker. I go, you know, Scott, they've come to love the mermaid. I built it in the basement. They've seen me build it, and they're, they're all saying Siranusa, Siranu, like in Spanish, right. or whatever. And they're crying because they don't want the mermaid to leave. Oh, wow. The little mermaid is leaving the building. I'm like, this is crazy. Wow. So we get it out here, we get it up there. We had to go up to the beach and get buckets of sand and hand them the buckets so we could finish it with fire out. Oh, wow. Wow. So that was another yeah. really cool story. Yeah, I mean, that's what I remember about yeah. the place when I was coming yeah, yeah. here. Yeah. Wow. Well, this place is an instant, absolute yeah. institution. Yeah. Absolutely. In my humble opinion, you know, I'm biased because I've been you know, friends with no, for many, many years. The best place there is. Well, we care. You know, we Sorry, care. I like to think we care. You do a great job. Yeah, we care. It's a blessed yeah. location, and it's not just that. It's just, uh, yeah, it was you always a great cool location. Of, you know, you hire folks that are awesome. They're the nicest hospitality. town. In a, in a land of, of you know, nice places, you guys really do shine. Well, so, my model growing, go, coming up at the same time I was opening, Danny Meyer, I don't know if you know Danny in the point, city. Yeah, sure. So Danny was opening in the city, and uh, I used to frequent Union Square Cafe when it first started Thanks opening. Lot, yeah. And I would pick his brain. He was, he was about my age. He's a good guy. And, uh, 
I even, I don't know if you know the newsletter I do. I didn't do yeah, it for course, COVID because yeah. people don't want to. You know, no, but no, I no. started that newsletter because of his newsletter. Oh, and you went okay. to Union Square Cafe and you sat down or you were a Scott, member. where can people find that newsletter? Just Generally, it's been, um, I think, pretty hard copies. Okay. Uh, but we have it on our website. Okay. Different, 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 I try to do a newsletter to get people. And the website would be what? Uh, www.islandmermaid.com and on Instagram. And they can sign up for that newsletter still yeah. there? At Island Mermaid OB. Okay. Um, but I wanted to create a newsletter to get people excited every year. I send it out in March just to get people a little jazzed yeah, yeah. up for the summer and yeah, tell them what's new either new politically yeah. a or... A lot of things over what, here have yeah. changed. Yeah. yeah, it's very nice. It's, it's very, very nice. nice, yeah. It's nice. It's, yeah. it's homey. It's... Yeah. 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 Keep it cool thing you do. Uh, funny, funny thing about the newsletter. So, in the last five years, I added a section called "Did You Know?" A little section, and I would throw in like funny things, like, "Did you know that Tita Fey lives in Fair, or has a house in Fire Island?" Or, "Did you know that it's a hundred-year anniversary of Ocean Beach?" Just fun facts. Right, right, right. So, two, three years ago, I had a blurb in it that said. Did you know Barbara Corcoran lives in Fire Island? You know, Shark Tank. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's like this. Movie. So I walk in one day, and it's the year that I put her in it, and she's sitting over here. And she, the newsletter goes down, and I'm walking around, I see her, and she stands up and says, Scott, I want to see you. I walk over, tail between my line, I don't know what she's an animal. Right, 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 right. right I'm like right. shitting. She goes, and she's pointing at the newsletter, she goes, I want a royalty for everybody. Ah! <laughs> I think like she's so serious. Right, 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 right. right. She goes, I'm just fucking with you. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, wow. Fire Island in general, special place, unique in all the world. I mean, just, and it's like, what surprises me is like, how many people live on a mainland and have never been But, but does here? that surprise you? Like when, it, it's, it's, it's gotten a little less like that because of the internet. More people, more and more people are finding it. But yeah, there's 8 million people within, you know, a boat ride away that don't know. Now, part of that's good, because part of what keeps Fire Island special is that it's unique and it's not it's overrun, yeah, right. you know, so when I first started, Bill knows that my, my firm does a lot of real estate out here, uh, when I first started coming out here, all the buyers were Manhattanites. You, every real estate deal right. was a Manhattanite. In the last 5, 7, 10 years, Long Islanders from West Islip to Patchogue, they're all buying houses here and it happened, probably started happening right after September 11th. And I think what happened was people said, I'm not waiting anymore. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna be in on that. And it really changed who the buyers and sellers are. A lot more Long Islanders coming here. Amazing thing, just, it's a unique community. Like we were talking yesterday with, with Jamie, who's a, a, a long time resident here, bartender here, contractor, many, many years. Uh, he was he usually said the word I use growing up here is freedom. It's what the place is free. So we have you know we have little yeah little because I have an eight year old son and the kids are like we just let him go and you don't have to worry about them. No kind. It's a great spot to grow up. They don't even know how good they have it. My kids they work at least since they're 12 years old as bus boys, but even before that, from the day they got out of school, I'd pick them up, come out here, they take their shoes off and. The freedom that Bill's talking about. Yeah, the, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And, and where, where and else everybody knows your kids. Like that. Yeah, it's one yeah, of those yeah, places yeah. where they see the kids doing something wrong, they act as a yeah. parent. They're like, uh, no, 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 no. I, I'm going to go tell your parents. The kids are like, that's awesome. Well, that's good. I wish everything was like that. Yeah. Great, great, great spot. Yeah. In my humble opinion, this is the center of it all. This is the, the best oh, thank spot. You. Thank you. There is. Uh, what's interesting, what's happened now out here is that if you look around, uh, we talked about this, there's two and three plus million dollar homes. People buying them and tearing down yeah. $900,000 houses built. Now, what's, the reason that's happening is because that same house that you're putting two million into, you would be on the wrong side of Montauk Highway out east, but here you are styling. So people have realized the value and the lifestyle. All right, granted, you may not have access 12 months a year, right. but but your steps from the beach for a much lower cost. Oh, oh, absolutely. Right, right, right. You know. Well, so Scotty, is there a possibility of us coming back and, and meeting with you again? Because I did not cover any of my questions. <laughs> I have a lot of questions. You're a storyteller. Uh, no, <laughs> but, 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 no, 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 but I got to tell you, it's, it's, it's kind of why I came here, because I don't think enough of what Viewers. we have done here 
comes out and, and, the, and, and, and the effort that it oh, took to get here. You gotta bring this guy with you. That's uh, the only um, yeah, 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 he's going away soon. So yeah, yeah. We gotta he's going the way. You know, that's yeah, what we're gonna do this <laughs> from uh, out here. So you, you have your big weekend coming up, so yeah. it's gonna be a little sketchy. And we're gonna also, have um, I lost my tennis. We're gonna have to logistically plan because you got yeah, like a crazy sure. time coming. We'll up. come during the week when it's yeah. not crazy. You're gonna have a you're gonna have the craziest yeah, yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. And we hope you know, we hope yeah. all. We can, we can just scan around really quick and you can see. It's, it's uh. I mean, this is we're not it's, even in the season here. Yeah, and it's this is it's pre-season. Different. It's vibrant. Yeah. People, people are ready. And you can feel the vibe themselves. here. You can feel it on. It's gotta be crazy. You said you grew up in Jamaica, Queens. Yeah. Where at? 149th and Sutphin, I think, is probably about as close as I could get you. Right near the Queen's su Supreme Court. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sutphin, I grew yeah. up on Hollis Avenue yeah. and, uh, yeah, 113th Street. I think Street. we left there. My brother's older, so he has more of a memory of it. We left there when I was probably about five. I left there a long time, um, too. Right. But, uh, this is a... Uh, you have a very nice spot. Oh, thanks. thanks. It's been nice. a long, long way to love. Here, like I said, I've been. And we take nothing for granted. Well, well, uh, my premise is you got to stay on top of it because yeah. nobody's yeah. coming. And you do. Uh, year you know, after year, the coming. consistency, that's, that's, a, that's, that's, that's a word I would that. use. Yeah. Consistency of your product, your staff. First of all, your greatest asset is your staff. Yeah. yeah. They, you know, you have a great product also, but your staff is the, is the best. Yeah. Uh, Try to hire your consistency is, you know, it's, it's a testament to you. Okay. And, and thank you, you also thank you. stay up on the trends, too. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. You, you, you A lot of firsts happen be, here. You always seem the to first be... first person to ever bring in... Ka remember karaoke? There you I go. karaoke before karaoke is... For good or for bad. <laughs> 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 I, I, I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a couple. Karaoke, I had a couple. Right. They, I had a couple <laughs> called John and Suki. They were the sunny and share of karaoke. Yeah. And all they did was fight for mic time. Oh. Like, all they It was crazy. And now, of course, we have... Drag Queen Bingo on Tuesday. Night. You really? You can't, get in. you can't get in. Every table is taken. Oh, what? Awesome. Top notch prizes. That's drag Queen awesome. Bingo. Yeah. I mean, it's fun stuff. Yeah. Just trying to make it fun. Right, so check it out. If you want to awesome run off what you have going on through the week for our viewers to see, so they can come over, yeah. you know, sure. which is sure. which is good. I can't believe Drag Queen Bingo. <laughs> Up every what? Uh, I'm not a drag queen. This guy. Yeah. Scott, thank you very much. Come check it out. Ocean Beach. Can't get here by a car unless you own a home. You gotta wait three years for a permit. I mean, three, if you're lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like yeah. ten. Or, or whatever. I can get a, a, a four-wheel drive. Island ferries. Ferries or cool boats like these guys got to come over. Yeah. Oh, you have to know people with cool boats. Thank you, Scott. Uh, Island Mermaid, this is 86. This. this podcast, and we're 86 this guy. Ah. So that ends Ocean Beach. We're out. And now to the next on location for 86 this podcast. Get ready, guys. We're coming at you soon. Thank you.